Oh, welcome everyone to Accessibility New York City. This is our first meetup of 2018. Great to have so many people uh, in attendance tonight. Uh, our goal and one of the things we strive to do is to have you know, a high tech live stream meetup where we have live captioning uh, in real time as we present. Uh, my name is Thomas Logan. I'm one of the organizers of the meetup here would love to have time to get to know some of you all, this might be your first meetup um, after the meeting or the presentations today. We've got our, our meetup URL, um, the YouTube URL, so the presentation tonight, we do uh, keep the archive of all of the presentations from our meetings, um, and we have the captions associated with the videos and the trainings that uh, we have here. And it's a great resource just to be able to go back over the last few years of what uh, the meetup has had a lot of great speakers. Want to quickly thank our sponsors. Um, we have Level Access, who has been for pretty much our existence, providing uh, sponsorship for the communication access real time translations that we have. I uh, want to thank Internet Society, New York Chapter. This is Jolly McPhee in the back that gives us our great high quality stream that's out there live. Thanks to the New York Public Library, who's hosting us uh, in this event space tonight, the Andrew, Andrew High School Library. White Coat Captioning has been our provider for providing the text translations that we see up on the screen. Equal Entry is my company, and we focus on getting this event organized and happening on time. And our new sponsor tonight is uh, Ira. So in, in our quest to continue to innovate and do new things with technology, we're very excited to um, begin working with this idea of IRA, which is a new technology to provide audio descriptions um, live in a real environment. So just beginning to explore this concept, um, we have Marty Watts uh, here tonight, who will be available to talk after the meetup, and we're also planning to have a uh, meetup after this event to get more in depth on this technology, but it's very exciting technology and we appreciate the sponsorship uh, basically at this event. Someone who has signed up for the service to receive audio descriptions of the visuals or visual information that's occurring uh, will be able to get those audio descriptions for free at our event, so we appreciate that. Uh, last piece before our presentation, so we haven't met in a while, but it's Super exciting here in New York City, the Access Plus Ability exhibit at the Cooper Hewitt Museum. You know, for all of us that come here, we're very interested, hopefully, in technology and how technology and design can change people's lives. And so this exhibit is all of this really interesting technology for uh, and designs for providing solutions for people with disabilities. I believe it's going to be in New York City until September of this year, so you have a good amount of time to make it out there, but figured I just went this weekend, blew me away, awesome technologies, awesome stuff to learn from, it's a great exhibit. So just wanted to share that with the group, um, if you haven't heard about it, it's access plus ability. Um, so with that said, I'm now going to be handing it over to our presenters for the evening, um, the, the National Center for uh, Accessible Media and the WGBH, you know, they have been pioneers in working in this space, you know, from at least when I started working in accessibility. I remember using their software 15 years ago, Magpie, uh, looking at how to provide captions, you know, and that was a tool that I used back then. Very excited tonight to learn about their new software and learn about new features, new ways to make uh, media accessible. And with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Donna, one of our guests tonight. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Um, my name is Donna Danieleski. I'm the director of the National Center for Accessible Media at WGBH Educational Foundation, and I'm so grateful for the opportunity to present here tonight. So thank you, Thomas, and everyone for helping to organize this event. Um, I'm here with my team today, and we'll be talking a little bit about our free software, Cadet, the caption and description editing tool, and providing a bit of training for you the software, as you will hear many times today, is free. Um, check it out on our website, download it, play around with it. There's a uh, support group online as well for you to ask any questions there. 
And we're just thrilled. We're thrilled at the opportunity to have been able to create it for you and to share it with you. And um, I don't want to go too far since I know we got a bit of a late start. I'm going to be quiet now and introduce you to my two colleagues who will be taking you through tonight's presentation. I have Jeff Freed and Brian Gould, and I'm not sure who's speaking first. Okay. And so, so that wasn't so smooth. Let me introduce you to Jeff Freed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Don't, don't, um, don't clap yet until I deliver the goods. Um, my apologies to people standing behind me. I'll be working on a computer sideways, so at some points my back will be to you. Uh, my name is Jeff Freed. I'm here with Brian Gould, um, and um, we're going to be showing you uh, at a sort of high level how our new captioning and description tool called Cadet works. As Donna said, it's free, and um, there are a lot of good things about it, but first, for those of you who aren't familiar with NCAM's work, I want to give you just a two-minute overview of who we are. Um, NCAM was um, um, born in 1991 at the WGBH Educational Foundation in Boston. That's the same WGBH that you know if you watch public TV or listen to public radio. But our history of accessibility actually goes back to 1971, which is when we founded the Caption Center and invented captions for broadcast TV. So all of the captioning technology that you see here tonight and that you see on TV and in movies is rooted in Boston at WGBH in the early 1970s. So we have a very long history. Um, in accessibility. In 1990, WGBH launched a new service called Descriptive Video Service, or DVS. Um, and for those of you who are familiar with audio descriptions, WGBH was a pioneer in um, audio description for broadcast television. And so you'll be seeing Brian talk a lot about descriptions and the description half of Cadet tonight, too. Um, Thomas mentioned Magpie, which was the original free do-it-yourself online captioning tool that we released around 2000. And Magpie was um, a tool that could be used to write captions for online purposes. And, um, you know, Magpie was a great tool, but it got a little long in the tooth and fell behind the times. And so with some funding that we got from the Massachusetts Attorney General's office, we redeveloped Magpie into something called Cadet. And that is what we will be talking about tonight. Um, Cadet is a uh, browser-based caption editor and audio description editor. Um, it runs on the Mac. It runs on Windows. I'm told it runs in Linux, but Linux scares me, so I don't use Linux. Um, but people say it works fine there, so I'll take their word for it. Um, because it runs in a browser, um, it uses HTML. And because it uses HTML, we can write the software itself, the application, to take advantage of all the accessibility stuff that is built into HTML and other kinds of markup. So if you are a keyboard user, if you are a screen reader user, or a user of some assistive technology, you will be able to use Magpie as well. No, I'm sorry, Cadet. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I'm glad that happened early. I make this mistake all the time. I was involved in the development of Magpie almost 20 years ago, and it's, it's, it's an old habit. So when I say magpie, Brian will say cadet. Thank you. All right. Um, <clears throat> um, cadet is used for writing what we sometimes call pre-produced or offline captions. This is a tool to write captions for programming that is already produced. This is not for live captioning. That takes a whole different skill set on the part of the captioner and a whole different technology set, too. So Magpie can be used to write captions and descriptions for pre-produced material or offline material. I'm going to walk you through the captioning half. And when I'm done, Brian's going to walk you through the, the description half. And I encourage you all to ask questions as we go along rather than save them up till the end. We've got about 50 minutes. So if you've got questions, raise your hand. Otherwise, I'm just like an out of control train, which is probably not the thing to say, given what has happened. <laughs> Okay, um, what we have on the screen now is um, a completed captioning project. And by completed, I mean this is a project that um, uh, contains a video that I want to caption, and it contains captions that I wrote. Magpie is made up of three components, okay? Uh, oh, jeez, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not doing that on purpose. Cadet, is that why you shook your head? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I apologize to the captioner. Um, over here we have a media player. So this is where the video is going to play in Cadet. 
Um, over here we have the editor, and this is where you will type captions or write captions and do some other things like time the captions. And then down below, which is covered right now by the captioning window, is, is a little status area where you can see error messages or progress messages and things like that. Yes, question? You can't follow the instructions on the website? In the. Okay, so you're not able to. I see, okay, okay. Why don't we talk afterward? I know the guy who wrote the manual, so I'll, uh, I'll, um, I'll go through that with you. <laughs> He's a nice guy. Okay, so what we have here in our finished caption project is um, the text over here, the captions, and the video. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm just, to show you what the finished project looks like, I'm gonna show you the captions playing in the video player, and then I'll show you how it's done. So we'll just run this quickly. Hello. You know how frustrating it is trying to help your kids when they're sick. Don't feel so good. A visit to the doctor's office can be a challenge. No, I don't want you to take my temperature, no. I wish you'd feel better. You fear. Snorts, nipple sneeze. No antibiotics, please. I'll pause it right there. <laughs> okay, so on the screen, what we saw were captions playing over the video, and, <clears throat> and those captions were the same text that we can see in the caption editor. Um, what I'll do now is I'll erase all the work, and then we'll go through the steps that are involved in creating captions. And as we go along, um, ask questions. Um, Magpa <laughs> Cadet, can't see I caught it myself. Um, Cadet uh, can caption videos um, of just about any format. Um, so if you're a video producer or if you have a library of videos that need to be captioned, um, MP4 is always the happiest format, but there are other formats that uh, Cadet can handle as well. Just about any format that will play in your browser, meaning if you use Safari or Firefox or Chrome or Internet Explorer on Mac or Windows, um, uh, Cadet will handle whatever format that is. Most people use MP4 these days, okay? So the first thing you need to do in order to write captions is open a video. So we will add a video to Cadet, and here's the video, the same one we just looked at. Turn it ahead of it. There we go, okay? No caps. Hey, it's funny, we see captions here. All right, well, let's, uh, I don't, let's quit and restart. I don't know why that happened, but okay, let's try it again. Of course, it worked fine in the hotel room, right? Okay, so let's, let's try it again. Yes, please. Um, Antonio, and Hi. the question is, if you're selecting a video, can you open it as a file on your computer? Open it from YouTube, mm -hmm. all of the above. Good question. Um, <clears throat> if, if you are selecting a video to caption, um, the video should live on your computer. It should be local, which is actually um, uh, a nice feature about Magpie is that you don't need to be connected to the internet in order to use it, which is a, kind of a nice privacy thing for one thing. If you're in an academic setting, that can be important. Um, but also it means that you can download a bunch of videos on your computer and then take a long flight and caption them in the airplane if you need to, for example, or any offline situation. Once you write the captions, you can then send the caption file to YouTube or Vimeo or any other hosting service or you know, 
uh, use it in your own player if you need to. Okay. 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 So now we have um, a video loaded into Cadet. Okay. There we go. Whoops. And so now we need to write. Stop it. Okay, now we need to write some captions. Okay. Um, there are several ways to enter caption text into Cadet. The most obvious way is that you can type directly into the editor. And the way that you do that is by playing the video for a few seconds, stopping, typing. Playing, stopping, typing. Okay? One nice feature about Cadet is that you can um, play it at slower and faster speeds. So you can slow it down. Which is probably not the thing to do at six o'clock at night. So we could type that. Okay. And so forth. Okay. After you type one block of captions, if you hit the enter key twice. A new row will appear on the screen, and you can type. And then you can go enter, enter, and type some more. OK? And type some more. <clears throat> this is a perfectly valid way to enter captions into Magpie, but as you can see, it might be a little tedious. It might be kind of slow. Cadet, sorry. <laughs> and Magpie, too. It was the same thing. <laughs> um, but there, there are faster ways to do it, OK? Um, a faster way to do it, let's clear out what we just did. Okay, get rid of everything. A faster way to do it is actually to transcribe the audio of your video using a word processor like TextEdit or BBEdit or um, even Word, as long as you save the file as a text file. Um, and I did that ahead of time using um, an application called BBEdit, which is just a plain text editor. Um, you can type your entire script into this text editor, and if you put an extra blank row between each block of captions, Cadet will understand that to mean um, each one of these little blocks of text will go into one of those cells in the editor. So if you insert these extra rows or double carriage returns between each caption, when you open the file, when you import, that file into Cadet, it looks like this, which is a fully typed out caption, uh, caption project. Okay? So all of the caption text for this video was transcribed outside of Cadet and imported. This is, this is a much faster way to do it. Um, this also means that if you use a speech-to-text application, like Dragon Naturally Speaking, you can transcribe perhaps by re-speaking the audio into Dragon, clean up the transcript, and then import it into Magpie. You can use YouTube if you like to use YouTube to um, create auto captions but not upload the, but not use just auto captions in their natural state because they're not very accurate, he said bitterly. Um, you can download the transcript from YouTube, clean it up in Magpie, Cadet, and send it back to YouTube, okay? Demerit, I know, I'm, uh, I'm having a rough night. Okay, so now we have all the caption text in the editor. We're, we, we now have the text, but we have no way to display the text with the video. That's because captions require timing information that instruct the captions when to appear on the screen and when to disappear, okay? And Cadet will do that for you too. It's, um, we like to think a straightforward operation the way that it works is you play the video and you listen to the video. And when you hear the words spoken that correspond to the first caption, or in this case, the first sound effect, which is a woman sneezing, you press a key, which in Cadet is control. Hold down the control key and just press the comma. And you will see a time code at that instant enter the start column, which represents when the caption should start its display. And then Cadet will, the little green focus, will move down 
to the next caption and sort of arm itself for the next key press. And when you press con uh, control comma, it will move down again and so forth, okay? And I'll show you how that works now. I'm gonna have to put down the mic because my hand is not, well actually it is big enough, but um, I don't wanna take the chance. So I'm gonna put down the mic and I will speak loudly as I do this. So here we go, I'm gonna play the video and watch the time codes in the start column. We'll go through this video, it's about one minute long. Pick up the speed, I guess, right? So that's normal. Okay, let's go back. There we go. You know how frustrating it is trying to help your kids when they're sick. I don't feel so good. A visit to the doctor's office can be a challenge. No, I don't want you to take my temperature. No. I wish it would feel better. My ear. Snickle sneeze. No antibiotics, please. As a parent, you want to help make your child feel better as fast as possible. It's tempting to think that antibiotics are the answer when your child is sick, but that may not always be the case. You don't look so good. A lot of illnesses can be caused by viruses, and antibiotics don't work on viruses. In fact, antibiotics are strong medicines that can have serious side effects. Okay. Stop there. That's about one minute of captioning, okay? And because I, of course, have seen this video a few times, um, I'm able to anticipate when <clears throat> to press the, the timing command. Um, I always advise people, if you're going to be captioning a video, especially for the first time, um, watch it ahead of time, or at least watch five minutes of it, so that when you actually start timing, you'll have a feel for when you need to anticipate when the words are spoken. But let's look at what we did, okay? Now we have, in the caption editor, we have a time code in every cell that represents the start time, which is when each caption is supposed to appear. And some of the captions have a time code in the end column, which means the caption will erase because no words are being spoken. So you, we, we say that's erasing the display. And then the following caption has a time code indicating when it should appear when the, when the, audio, when the person, the narrator, is speaking again. Okay? So now that we've done that, let's go back and review a little piece of this because as you all know, when captioning, it's easy to make mistakes and you should always review your work and make corrections. So let's do that now. So I'll play the video. Um, I know that I made a couple of mistakes, so I'll stop and correct them and show you how you can correct some errors and then we'll move on. So here we go. You Okay, that first caption, I think she sneezed a little bit before the caption appeared. Um, I'm kind of persnickety about timing, as my colleagues know. So I'm going to back up a little bit the video using the keyboard um, so I can have a nice precise timing point. And now that the woman who is sneezing is just beginning to appear on the screen, I'm going to change the time code by simply pressing the timing command. Like that. Uh, on the keyboard, the keyboard command for cadet to back up a little bit at a time is control G for Jeff. Uh, it's the same. The keyboard commands are the same on uh, Mac and Windows. Um, so now let's play forward and see what's next. You know how. That was a little bit late too, so let's back it up just a little. And retime it. Whoops, I, backed, I did time the wrong caption, so let's back her up again. Correct my mistakes. G. Move it down. You know. Okay. There we go. Okay. You know how frustrating it is trying to help your kids when they're sick. I don't feel so good. That looks pretty a good. Visit to the That's good. doctor's office can be a challenge. No, I don't want you to take my temperature. No. 
I wish it would feel better. My ear. Okay, now there will be one thing here. I'll show you how to change. Okay, the captions are at the bottom of the screen and they're covering up something, like a, a visual element, covering up words. So we can use Cadet to move the captions to the top of the screen. And the way you do that is simply highlight the caption rows that you want to move. We have two rows and you can choose a style Whoops for the top and the captions will go to the top like that. So you can move them to the top and in the editor there's a little caret that points up next to the row number that indicates these are at the top of the screen. Okay? No antibiotics, please. Okay. So in the interest of time, I'll move on to the next thing, but I just wanted to show you a couple of things that you can do to correct your work, okay? When you are captioning, uh, if you have a five minute video, you should expect to spend half an hour on it, writing the captions, timing the captions, fixing the work, and then doing something with the captions, okay? Now that you've created a caption file, you've timed it, you've edited it, you've checked your work, everything looks great, what are you gonna do with it? Chances are really high you're gonna do one of two things. You're going to send those captions to a video hosting service like YouTube or Vimeo. Or maybe you're going to embed those captions in a video on your web page. Okay? Um, either way, you need to do a process which is called export. And exporting takes the captions that you've written and turns them into a format that a video player can understand. A couple of very common formats that some of you might know about are called WebVTT. Uh, another one is called SRT, another one is called TTML, and there, there are others too. If you use YouTube or Vimeo um, or other video hosting services, WebVTT tends to be the one that they like. They also like SRT. Um, browsers, if you're embedding a video into a browser, they, they all like WebVTT. Some of them like TTML, okay? So let's export this file in one of those formats and we'll export it as WebVTT, okay? And Cadet's telling me I've already done it once, but I'll tell it to overwrite. And now when it exports, it gives me a message. And now if, let's do it this way, do, 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 do. okay? If you have a video that you want to, I'm sorry, I'm covering up the caption window. I'm about to uncover it. I've lost the caption window. Uh oh, sorry, hang on. Um, is it in the same browser window? Oh, I'm sorry, okay. My apologies. There we go. Come on down here. Yes, I'm very sorry, okay. I'm. Uh, Okay, apologies for that. Ah. Okay. Okay. Here we go. All right. So here is a video embedded in a web page. Here's a video embedded in a web page. Okay. Um, and these are the captions that we just wrote. You know how frustrating it is trying to help your kids when they're sick. The doctor's office can be a challenge. No, I don't want it. I know you don't want it. Okay. Um, so these are the same captions that we just wrote embedded in a simple web page. These would also be the captions that you would upload to YouTube, Vimeo, or any other service. Or if you create your own player, that caption file is what you would reference, which is a bigger topic than we have for tonight. Um, <clears throat> in a little bit of a rushed fashion, that's how Cadet works. Yes. A good question, yes, a very good question. Um, 
we have a rule at NCAM that says just because you can do it in cadet doesn't mean that it will show up as you expect in any one of these players. And that is because different browsers and different players um, support all or some of the caption specifications like SRT and WebVTT and stuff. Um, <clears throat> and so the answer with YouTube is no. Um, and the answer with Vimeo, I'm pretty sure, is no as well. Um, uh, some browsers will support by going to the top and going to the bottom as well. One nice thing about YouTube captions is that the user can actually drag them, click and drag them wherever they want out of the way. Um, so when you use a special feature like moving the captions or coloring the captions in Cadet, you should always test it in the target player to make sure that that's supported. Okay? One more, yeah. Um, so the question is, when you upload the captions to YouTube, are they open, which means they can't be turned off, or are they closed? Can you turn them on and off? They are closed, um, and there's, uh, if the video has captions, there's a little, a little button that surfaces in the player, and you press the button, and you choose the captions that you want to see, yeah. Would this work would override the automatic Thankfully, yes, yeah. Um, yeah, and, and there is a way to disable the automatic captions as well, which is available on the YouTube help site which you should do if you're going to be putting up real captions. Okay. Um, in the interest of time, I'm gonna turn things over to Brian now, who's gonna talk about um, audio descriptions. So. Hi, I'm Brian Gould. I'm a colleague of Jeff and Donna's, and I'm gonna talk about audio description. So audio description um, was uh, also pioneered, actually, I'm trying to put my little pieces of paper somewhere where I can see them, but I'm not having any luck. Um, was pioneered also at WGBH Light Captions uh, in the early 1990s. And uh, audio description is a similar service, except almost the reverse of, of captions, in that uh, audio description is obviously an audio track that's added to the soundtrack of a TV show or a movie. And a narrator describes the visual elements of the, the scene. Um, and it's woven uh, seamlessly, hopefully, uh, in the natural pauses in the dialogue. And if anyone's not familiar with description, I will play just a little uh, snippet of it, and then I'll show you how you can use Cadet to write description scripts. And this isn't gonna work because it's not my computer. Whoops. But that's okay, because when I'm all done writing the script, I'm gonna show you a described uh, video. So what I have here is the, ca the cadet editor, and I'm going to move my video to a predetermined point. In a video. So the setup is similar to captions, although since I've moved project type from captions to descriptions, I should actually move up here, I've gained um, a couple of more tools. I still have start times and end times because you need to know when the description needs to be spoken. Now I have something, a new column called an audio cue. So it's very important to know that with Cadet, you're not creating an audio track. The output of Cadet is a script that is intended to be either recorded um, by a human narrator or read out by text-to-speech. Um, and the way that process would work in embedding that into a video is a uh, presentation for another day. But let's put it at, you're writing a description script that will then be recorded in a separate process and then added to the video. So if you have a narrator, usually description scripts are recorded in real time. You play the video and then, you, and then as a pause comes up, the narrator would read the description and the audio cue helps them know when they should start reading. Also, narrators will watch um, the time code to know when something's coming up and also when it ends. Um, so that's why you have those. The caption column has turned into the description column. And of course, it doesn't matter how much you write. You need to write as much description as you have time for. If there's a very long pause, it's a lot, you're going to write not very much in three seconds or five seconds. But if there's a very long pause, 90 seconds, two minutes, five minutes, you're going to write a lot of description, and you can fill up this entire, uh, you can fill up pages and pages 
um, it's fine. Um, because it's different from captions. Captions you want to keep to uh, a certain number of words or maybe two lines so that it can be read. Um, but that it's a, it's a different case where you're going to be hearing it for captions. You also, at the top, have a really uh, vital tool for anybody who's writing descriptions, and that's the times window. It gives you, it, and it says descrip uh, description and pause times. And let's dive right into uh, creating a new description, and I'll show you the way that this works. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play. Actually, I know that I'm set up for the beginning of a pause, so I'm going to go ahead and put in the uh, in time for this pause. And again, the process of writing descriptions and captions is quite different. For captions, you can write a transcript and then time it. For descriptions, you can't do that because you could write a description of the scene and find out there's only five seconds of silence in the entire scene. So you have to kind of map out how much time, how much pause, so to speak, there is in a scene so that you know how you're going to approach the description. Can you give a lot of information setting it up early? Or is it very dialogue heavy early in the scene and you need to weave in little bits of description as the scene goes on? What, what information are you going to be able to provide when? So as a describer, you need to time out maybe a minute, maybe longer, so that you have sort of that map to know what you're going to write when. So I'll go ahead and play, and as soon as I hear dialogue starting up, I'm going to stop it, rewind it just a little bit, and create my out time uh, or my end time. This. Okay, that started dialogue. I'm going to jump back using a keyboard command, and I'm going to create my out time. So I now, if we look up at the pause uh, times up there, I have. 4.08 seconds. So as an experienced describer, I know pretty much what I can write in there. Um, I started writing descriptions at WGBH in 1996, so I've been doing it for a little bit of time. Um, however, I have my notes, so I already know what I'm going to write. And we've already set up that we're in a yurt. And I'm cheating because I've watched this probably 500 times, and I know it's about to happen. In a yurt, the shaman studies the spear. And for the narration session, I need to let the narrator know when to start speaking. So the narrator may be looking at time code, but it's also helpful to have either an audio or a visual uh, cue. And I know that the cue here is cut to black because we're moving from one scene to another. Okay. So I'll go ahead and double carriage return, and now I'm ready to map out my next pause, my next uh, opportunity to provide a little description. This blade has a dark past. It has shed much innocent blood. Well, we're getting interested here. Okay, so we'll go ahead and put in my in time. I'm going to turn this up. And now we'll listen for when dialogue starts up again. You're a fool for. Okay, and I know I'll back up a little bit to when he just about starts talking. And again, I have 2.28 seconds. I can't say a lot. Again, normally a describer would do this process for one or two or three minutes far into the scene. I've I know exactly what's happening and I know what information I need to give because we're about to hear a sound effect of him pouring soup into a bowl. And if you can't see it, it's very odd. <laughs> you don't know what's happening. What is he doing? Uh, what is he pouring? Uh, so he ladles soup into a bowl. And I've spelled that wrong, but we have spell check. A little red squiggly. Um, in Cadet, so I can, it's not Magpie, it's Cadet. And I know I need to tell my narrator, he just said, innocent blood. 
Okay, so now I need to show you perhaps the best part of Cadet for writing description, which is if we look up at the times window, we have our pause time is 2.28 seconds, and now the window is turned red, and I have a little musical note, which means look up here, there's a note, and it actually, Cadet, oops, automatically estimates the reading time of a narrator and tells me I've written 2.8 seconds of description, okay? Uh, if you find that your narrators speak faster or slower, that reading speed is adjustable in Cadet, as are a lot of features of Cadet, very adjustable. Um, but I know that this works pretty well. Now, I know through experience that that's not, this, this is not a, uh, a vital error. We're not off by too, too much. Um, and maybe I could go back and find out, squeeze a few more um, tenths of a second on one side of the description or another. But I can also just back it up. And because the descriptions show up on the screen, just like captions, I can go ahead and play it and read it myself and say, does this really fit or not? Now, if I was off by a second or two seconds or five seconds, I would know I'd really have to come back and edit uh, a lot. And it, it's very helpful to know how much time uh, you have available to you. So I will back up. Uh, what am I doing wrong? There we go. And let's play this. He ladles hot soup into a bowl. You're a fool for traveling alone, so I even added an adjective. That was good. Um, so uh, let's write a couple more, and then I will show you something really neat. So completely unprepared. You're lucky your blood's still flowing. Okay. You're lucky your blood's still flowing. That's the beginning of what I know is going to be a pause. My description is he hands her the bowl. And how did I do there? Oh, I forgot. See, I look up to my pause time to see how I did, and I forgot to put the out time. So I need to back up, which is very easy to scrub back and forth. And you can do that by very tiny increments. Uh, sort of medium size or large increments. I think, I don't remember what we have it set here, maybe a, a half a second, a second, and a second and a half, just by a different key command. Uh, also, those are completely adjustable, so you can um, set your, your scrub parameters, uh, however, whatever works for you. You're lucky your blood's still flowing. Thank you. So we want to get out just before she says thank you. That should be about right. And again, I've gone a little bit over Maybe I'm being a little sloppy with my timing. Again, really, if you're off by a second or more, that's when you're going to be in trouble. And if you have 13 seconds, 25 seconds, 50 seconds of pause in your writing, there's no way to estimate that in your, in your mind. Or even your reading, you're going to naturally sometimes speak too fast. So Cadet gives you this tool that actually is a check against someone's natural tendencies to keep all of the beautiful words that you've written. If you need to cut it down, you need to cut it down because you want that delivery to be um, as consistent and as flat as possible. You don't want your narrator speeding up or slowing down. You want it to be quite, quite concise and consistent. Um, and again, this tool helps you write a script that can be recorded. There's the, the tool is not going to write descriptions for you. Um, it's also not going to make suggestions about what's the context of this film, am I writing, or this show, am I writing educational programming for early learners, or am I doing uh, sort of an adult drama or an action film where your, uh, your vocabulary, your sentence structure, your sentence length, uh, your assumptions about what your audience has experience with are all going to be different. So the content of description, again, um, is really focus on the context of the video you're working on. Cadet's not going to help you with that. Uh, it's going to help you time things out and then provide uh, a script that you, can sh uh, that you can record later. But let's go ahead and go into review mode. I'm going to back up, actually, to the beginning of this um, film. 
And what we've been doing in edit mode is the, let me think about this. As you create, you, you're creating new descriptions and then you're playing the, uh, the video and sort of the, uh, you're, you're moving the video to where you want to be. In this case, when we switch to review mode, the big change is that when I hit play, my cursor inside of the, uh, the editing window is going to follow the film. So the reason for that is maybe 25, capt or 25 descriptions down, I find an error. Well, I don't want to have to hunt for it. Cadet's already going to have you right in exactly in the, the column and the cell that you need to be to make your edit, OK? It also does something else. We saw that it displays the descriptions just like captions, so you can read them without having to um, uh, look inside the description field, you can read them right off the screen. There's also an, an, a really neat little feature that's so helpful for editing, and I'm going to go ahead and play it right now. Oops. But it didn't work. Ah. I didn't have the cursor at the beginning. Cue to start time. Here we are. In animation, Miss hangs over snow-capped mountains. Our view weaves among the craggy peaks. Titles appear. The Blender Foundation presents the Durian Open Movie Project, a Blender Institute production. This film was supported by the Netherlands Film Fund. her leather collar close around her neck. A bandit attacks. The girl blocks his spear with her pole. It breaks in half. So what the heck is happening? So Cadet, this is the one feature that you need to be connected to the internet for. Cadet's actually reaching out to an open source free TCS engine and is reading the captions out loud so that you, as the description editor, can experience what the final product will be like. And that is uh, really, really helpful because then you don't have to be reading. You can sit back and watch it as an audience member and see if your, your sentence structure is appropriate, if you use good vocabulary, if the, um, uh, if the descriptions really do fit in the space you want. And you can adjust. And it's a, it's a different experience reading yourself or hearing it as the final product um, is meant to be. Uh, and I don't know any other tools, certainly no other free ones that, that have this uh, feature, and I've found it um, incredibly helpful. Uh, let's see, anything else? Yes, so we've written all of our descriptions, we've timed them out, we've um, edited them and reviewed them, we know that they're perfect, so we can go ahead and export, and we have a description export. You can export into any of these uh, formats. You wouldn't export to SRT or Web uh, VTT, but you might export as a plain text file. But really what you want to do is export into Cadet's description format. And this is why. Because you get a nice HTML script that gives all the information uh, in a format that's very, very helpful if you're using an audio engineer or a producer and also for the narrator you know which uh, caption event or description event that you're in. You have the in time to look at. You have your cue right there. Here we have fade in. I'm going to scroll down just a little bit once we have some dialogue. You can see your audio cues right here. The um, description that's going to be read is in very large bold font and then the narrator may want to uh, look at the same time of the time code and know when to stop to when they're going to need to stop talking and That can be either handed to someone on a laptop or on a tablet or printed out uh, in this way and this is um, a Really simple, but very clean and useful um, Script format So I'm going to click back into cadet
And that was sort of really quick, but uh, I think I'm ready to answer any questions if you have uh, them about writing description with Cadet. Yeah. So I have a question. Can people hear me or do I have a mic? I'll repeat, I think. So uh, I, uh, I have a question about both the description and the captions. Um, does uh, Cadet only offer support for English or are other languages supported, particularly languages that don't use so the question is, does cadet for descriptions and captions support multiple languages? Yes. And the answer is yes. yes. And yep. uh, how many? Um, or are, they, are there any that we know it doesn't? Um, you can write, yep, you can write uh, captions, you write captions in cadet in any, any um, encoded language that you can type into your computer. Let's put it that way. Um, you can do the same for descriptions, and you can certainly generate a script like what Brian showed you and, and print it out. What the text-to-speech engine does with that, that's a good question. We've never played with that. My, my right. assumption is that it's probably going to mangle it, but I don't know. I don't know. But the real answer to your question is yes, you can write just about anything you want into the editor. Any other questions? Yes, right here. Are you able to export not just the description, but is there a way to export the video with the recorded description, or are you not the, the tools just to create like a, a script for the description? Right, so the question is, are you exporting in description only the script, or also that TTS voice along with it? And the answer is, you're not. Um, we haven't moved forward to try to, um, to do that. Uh, the text-to-speech engine that's being used is great in the editing process. Um, I don't know how great it would be um, to listen to. Uh, frankly, it does make mistakes. It spells some things out when you wouldn't expect it to. You would have to do some, some fudging with it. Um, yeah, also technically there's some challenges can talk about those. But, um, <clears throat> but you could, if you wanted to um, export, say, just a, a raw text file and then feed that through um, another text-to-speech engine like Text Aloud or something else that uh, maybe is more sophisticated and you can create an audio track that way um, with perhaps nicer voices and then you could edit that into your video. Can you maybe like explain some of the technicalities once you export it? the script, how does that turn into an audio described video? Um, well, yeah, why don't you talk about what happens with the script? Sure, the script then needs to be uh, recorded. Tip most typically, the way it works is that uh, a human narrator reads the script, and that's recorded. And then there's a post-production process where that is integrated um, into the original soundtrack. Unfortunately, with most video platforms, Vimeo and YouTube and others, there's no way to have, like captions, a toggle on and off. So there's no description on and off. So you will have to offer either an open described video or two versions of the video, one that is um, described and one that's not. That's not, a, um, that's not the fault of Cadet, obviously. That's the fault of HTML5 not allowing you um, to do that, or, or really technology. Um, Following up on that, so there are no standard, you know, formats for audio description that everybody uses. You just arbitrarily chose HTML5 because it's readable. There isn't an XML schema or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there is a. Um, y yes, mostly correct. Yes. Um, there isn't any um, any formalized um, format for. Uh, say, exporting the description script that Brian wrote into an XML format that all text-to-speech engines will understand. 
um, unlike captions where you've got a number of standardized caption formats. Have you, have you talked to the W3C about that? Yeah, sure, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, um, yes, we've participated in a number of working groups around various kinds of markup languages. Um, there, there used to be um, uh, a style language called audio style sheets, which I don't even know if that's been used in decades, but the idea behind audio style sheets is that you would use styles like uh, CSS for text, you would use styles for audio, um, and as far as I know, audio style sheets went nowhere. Um, so, am I right? Yeah, somebody's giggling in the background. Um, um, so, th there has long been a need for something like what you're talking about, but there really has been no standardized approach, which is why um, one of the suggestions that we make is you use just a raw text file and feed that into a text-to-speech engine. That's, that's one approach. But right now, browsers and audio and video players can't do that text-to-speech for you, as far as I know. Custom, there, there are, there are custom, custom yes, I should, yes, thank you. Yeah, there, there are custom players that do do that. Um, and there are other approaches where you can actually feed invisible descriptions uh, to a, a region that uh, a screen reader can read aloud on the fly. That's another approach. That's another presentation for another night. Right, so, so. you can have pre-written pre timed descriptions uh, that are fed and that a screen reader would read, your screen reader would read while the video is playing. Uh, that but that's a, like an elegant solution. It is, but it's, it a, is, it's yeah. a custom solution um, that's not uh, widely available. We have another Spetline's question. The question is, uh, do, you have to see the do you have to see the description text or can it be hidden, but can it still be read aloud? Does, uh, does yes. Do you get my question? Yes. I actually don't know the yeah. question. I've never turned The question off. is, yes, can, can you turn the descriptions off in the caption editor? But still have it. Uh, and the answer is yes. Like that? Yes. So well, the audio would still be. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. the audio would still play. So if the captions in the editor are distracting, you can turn them. Separate from the caption track. Yes. Yes. Oh, from separate the separate file, separate data. I'll okay. So the, the real question is, well, when would you ever have both? You would never have both up. Say and that. the reason, you would never have both captions and descriptions playing in the editor because this is an editor and not a player, right? So you're either editing captions or you're editing and creating descriptions. Um, there's probably uh, times as a player you would want, you, you would want to have the option of either descriptions or captions or both or none, um, but in the editor, we're limited to only having one, one or, the, or other. the other. And the technical reason for that is because captions and descriptions are just time text uh, file that's be being created and displayed on the fly as they're being created. So Cadet doesn't know the difference. It, it's just displaying the time text that you're creating. It's uh, the mode, whether you're in description or, or or captions, uh, the way it displays or whether it reads it out loud. I hope that wasn't too confusing. Then you upload it to YouTube once it's. So you would have you would have to create the sound. So um, the issue is that there's not yet a seamless, elegant way to write a description script and then have it described a video. N nobody does this. Cadet enables you to uh, have a script that's timed and that you can record a narrator reading it and then you have to marry that description track to the video. Then that would be uploaded to YouTube or Vimeo or whatever your uh, video platform is. There's so <laughs> so that's a that's a great question. So the question is, uh, because people listen to screen readers so much faster than natural human speech, um, you could write a lot more description. So we have done some research and testing with this, uh, mostly at the use of uh, text-to-speech as the description voice. Um, and what we found 
as a result of that testing was that for shorter sort of how-to and or academic videos, um, the text-to-speech voice uh, was fine and the better, the, this, we did this mm, five, seven years ago and um, text-to-speech voices were just getting really pretty good. Now they're, they're quite excellent. Um, but when you are watching a film or, uh, or any video for entertainment, the overwhelming consensus was that text-to-speech didn't cut it. Uh, human narrator um, was much more pleasurable. It didn't make mistakes. Um, it didn't stumble over weird words. And those are all of the, you know, those are some of the issues you have with text-to-speech. Um, but it's also not been done in any widespread way. So once it is, probably people will be able to improve it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So that's our, basically in this space, we have really hard cutoffs, so we appreciate everyone, you know, coming out today. We can continue the conversations and the discussions kind of outside, but the, the library has a, a hard stop. So we appreciate, as always, everyone coming. It's a great talk tonight. Definitely going to be using Cadet myself on a project coming up. So thank you guys. And we will have our next meetup on March 6th. So we always the first Tuesday of the month. Uh, stay tuned to you know, the Twitter and the meetup page. Uh, we'll be announcing that very shortly. Thanks.